are now leaving Patagonia. Had a nice breakfast at Owens of Patagonia, which are, is very hiker friendly. We heard from some other hiker that they weren't friendly, but absolutely not true. At least not in our case. She was very accommodating and very talkative, so that's perfect. And the food tasted great. So we have another probably a few miles of road walking to do. Always nice with the road walk. <laughs> it's 20 minutes past 11, so we are getting a very late start. We'll see how far we get today. Uh, we are hoping for about 15 miles, which shouldn't be that impossible. We just had our lunch right here at this nice place. It's a beautiful day and now we have about 2,000 feet of climb or elevation as it's called. Um, then we get to our campsite which is, which, which, which is in about 8.7-ish miles. Um, so. Hopefully we'll make it before sundown. It's three o'clock now. Um, yeah. And I keep looking at that spot. I should keep looking over there. Our camp spot for tonight is going to be Casablanca Campgrounds, I think it's called, um, which is located at mile 66.7. So we have about seven miles to go. Um, we've been crossing a lot of streams the, the entire day. So water is not a problem at the moment. Um, as of March 21st, 2020, um, which is pretty nice because we have a big climb um, ahead of us, so we don't have to carry too much water up, which is always nice. And on the uh, 
descent. There's supposed to be some uh, to be a water source. Just go. Hi, cow. Moo? Are you aggressive? Why oh, is that such a nice cow? We are almost at the top of this saddle. We have a few hundred feet left, and then it's down for about, I think, two miles to our campsite. That was a steep one. Oh, yeah. But the views are amazing from up here as you just saw Good morning. It's nine o'clock and we just left our camp. And we are almost low. We're going that way? Okay. Just had a little stream crossing, so I had to concentrate. <laughs> just left our camp. Uh, another cold night on the Arizona Trail. <sighs> but. Yeah, I don't know, but what? That's just how it is. Another 15 miles to do today, and in about 10 miles, we have Kentucky camp, where we will take a lunch break. And then we'll head on five more miles to our camp. Looks like it's gonna be a beautiful today as well. And my nose is red. <laughs> cool. Oh yeah. Well, it is a beautiful day and it's already starting to get pretty hot. The elevation today is pretty decent, it seems. Um, the steepest ascent we have to do is about 400 feet, which isn't that bad at all. Yesterday we got to camp at around 8 o'clock, so it was it was dark when we got to camp, but it was a beautiful camp, but nevertheless. <coughs> and we had some dinner and then we went to bed. And in the last chapter I talked about a rash, but 
wasn't actually a rash, it was just chafing. Uh, so when I got to Patagonia, I bought some Vaseline, uh, which seems to have helped a lot. I uh, still have some that I apply. Uh, I am pretty sure that if people come by while I'm out here in the wild applying Vaseline, it's gonna look so weird. Strange guy in the middle of nowhere robbing his genitals with a bottle of Vaseline. <laughs> what a pretty picture. <laughs> wow. Look at this. It is beautiful. It is so cool out here. I promised you earlier that I would tell you about my trip to Arizona. Um, so here we go. <laughs> my initial plan was to start the Arizona Trail on uh, March the 20th. Um, but the week before Denmark started shutting down, stores and everything um, so I got a little worried that they might also uh, shut down airports and everything um, and they did actually make a travel ban from other European countries to Denmark um, so I contacted Thomas which was another Danish guy who was supposed to do the uh, Pacific Crest Trail this year and we decided that might be a good idea to get to the US as soon as possible. Um, so we booked a flight to San Francisco um, on Wednesday, the week earlier or the week before uh, our initial departure. And yeah, we booked it for Friday that week. Um, so a week before I was supposed to fly. Um, when we woke up the next day, Trump had made a travel ban from European countries to the US uh, starting Friday at midnight, which meant we would just be able to, to get in before it, it kicked in. So we flew to San Francisco, rented a car and drove all the way down to San Diego uh, via Highway 1. Um, and from Highway 1, no, from San Diego, I booked a Greyhound to Tucson where a trail angel named Da picked me up, drove her to her nice home where I stayed the night and then the next day she drove me and two other hikers, um, the ones I am currently hiking with. Uh, she drove us to the uh, Montezuma Overlook, I think it's called, just very close to the uh, to the monument. Um, so that was a few crazy days. And getting to San Francisco and walking around, everything was just deserted. <laughs> really, really crazy. And the same in San Diego. Um, we did manage to pick up some needed items at REI before they closed down the day after. <laughs> so yeah, it's been crazy, but I am out here now and enjoying it very, very much. Uh, I just got to a historic mining in the Santa Rita, uh, 
So, gonna see what that is all about. If you're going to do the Arizona Trail um, in the future, not this year, um, but maybe next year, I highly suggest that you reach out to Da. Um, you can find her on Facebook. She's on the Arizona Trail group, um, Facebook group, that is. Yeah, she's an awesome woman, uh, very loquacious, so you won't have a dull moment. Uh, and she's a fountain of knowledge. She knows a lot of stuff that goes around. Uh, so that is very, very cool, and she is so nice. And it's a very cool place that she lets hikers hang out um, before she drives them to the, uh, to the terminus. So, thank you, Da. And highly suggest contacting her if you're going to do the, the trail. Uh, so far, the trail is amazing. Uh, there are, there are, there is a ton of water everywhere, um, which I'm not sure is the norm. But I'm not complaining, uh, except that you have to cross one billion streams. Uh, and I do not want to get my feet wet, so <laughs> I have to find a way to, to jump the stones. And sometimes it can be a little tricky. I think that might be a place to try. We'll see. I am now getting into Kentucky camp, where I will eat my lunch and then I have about five more miles to camp. Uh, Michaela and Vance are behind me, I don't know how far, but maybe an hour or so. No idea actually. actually. But
I got to the uh, Kentucky camp at around quarter past one. Got some lunch that I will need that I will need to change when I get to Vale because I'm already getting tired of cheese and sausage and crackers. So I need to try something else now. Um, after that I got a little nap and now it is almost five, no it is not, it is almost 3.30 and we have five miles to go, look at that, looks amazing, five miles to go ish, a little over and We want to be there before it gets dark today, which shouldn't be possible. Oh, yeah. I'm tired. I didn't sleep enough. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it is so beautiful out here. Look at that. Cool. Whoop. Kentucky camp is pretty cool. Um, they have an outhouse, they have water and they have trash bins. So it's a cool place to stop and have your lunch or whatever. Now I will get my ass in gear and get hiking. We made it to camp. The sun is somewhere. Nice camp, nice tree. And we are right next to a water source, which is always nice, except wherever there are cows, there is always cow poop. And apparently they are not taught the uh, leave no trace, so gonna be interesting if we are gonna die of drinking the water. It looks pretty cool, not pretty cool, it looks pretty okay, but I'm gonna use it for my, for my dinner, so filter and cook. A boil it so hopefully it's gonna be okay I'm not gonna eat breakfast tomorrow I think um, just eat some candy bars or something yeah but this is a pretty nice campsite lots of room and a nice pitch once again you should be proud of me CPACs I can almost cry. This is so beautiful. Beautiful pitch. Morning. So it is day five of my Arizona through hike. And I just realized that 10 feet from the other direction of our camp, there's a stream that seems so much nicer. <laughs> Doesn't appear to be any cow dung. Well, never mind. I'll find some better water in a little bit, hopefully. 
Last night was so much warmer than the other nights. So I got a good night's sleep. It's about 20 minutes to 8 and I just left camp. Vance left camp, I don't know, an hour, two hours ago. Um, he still has some problems with his knee, so he's walking slow. Uh, so he just wanted to get a head start. And Michaela left about half an hour ago. Um, oh, I will probably catch up sometime during the day. Oh, yeah. So another 15 miles to go today. Oh, sun is out. So it's been nice for a change to start slow because normally I would probably be in my 20, 25 mile range at this point. But yeah, I'm still on track. But I will probably and sadly have to to leave Vance and Michaela uh, at some point when we get a little bit further up the trail because I want to get done by around May 3rd or 4th. May the 4th be with me. Um, and that means that I do need to do more miles. But for now, I'm still on track, um, and it's so nice to have somebody to to hike with. Oh, there's something. I don't know what it is. There's something with my shoe now. Oh, have to figure that out. Well, anyways, I am gonna hike on and enjoy this beautiful ch chilly morning. Um, Might have been a good idea for me to have grabbed some of the water at the at the camp this morning because there hasn't been any water since <laughs> and it seems like I have to get a good chunk off trail to get to the closest water source which is still far ahead. Um, so the closest water source to trail which also seems most reliable is 18 miles um, and I only have like this much water but it tastes like crap for some reason the uh, the sink at the oh, Kentucky camp um, that water didn't taste very good it's supposed to be potable but yeah very very weird taste not even my crystal light could cover the taste <sighs> but I'll have to drink it at some point hopefully I will run into some water it's kind of crazy because we've been crossing stream after stream for the last few days and then suddenly everything dries up <laughs> oh yeah well well and the plan wasn't even to go 18 miles today. So I'm not sure the other two are up for that, but dry camping really, really sucks.
especially when you don't blah blah, especially when you don't have any water. Oh uh, yeah. Well, we'll see, and I will keep you updated. <laughs> or if you don't get any more updates, then I'm probably dead. Thankfully, I found water. <laughs> I also found a cow that got scared, so it ran away. Uh, okay, so... Well, I filtered the water, so it doesn't really matter if there's cow poop anywhere in it. That was so nice. I still have... I don't know... A few miles left. Yeah, I do. Uh, I've done about 12 miles right now. So realistically, I should only have about three more miles, but I just feel that's, that's too little. It's 11.30 right now, so we'll see. We'll see. Still not in a hurry. I'm gonna enjoy my water and and I will fill up and head on. So I managed to get a hitch into Vale. Uh, I got to the trailhead uh, at Highway 83. Um, there was a girl waiting for her sister. And when her sister came, um, yeah, they offered me a ride into Vale, and that was exciting. Uh, we got on a little detour. They almost ran over some rabbits, and they almost collided with another car, so... <laughs> Probably the most dangerous I've done on the trail yet, is that was get into the car. <laughs> but thank you, if you are watching, thank you so much for the ride. Um, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I didn't get their names. Um, oh, I forgot the names, because I'm such an idiot with names. But. Thank you, if you are watching. It was a good ride. <laughs> what I didn't realize is that there's no place to stay in there. <laughs> I got some pizza uh, and some Coke, which I couldn't even finish either. So apparently I don't have Heiger Hunger yet. Uh, sun is setting out there. That is so pretty. There you go. Um, yeah. So right now I'm just going to... Jesus Christ. I'm going to Safeway to uh, top off my resupply. Probably could have gone all the way to... I think Summerhaven is the next place that I want to go. But then I've just wasted a whole trip into Vale, uh, and I don't want to do that. <laughs> so a little trip down to Safeway, get some resupply, and then uh, try to get back on the trail uh, and find a camp spot somewhere. Because it is six o'clock, right on the spot, and I'm getting a little tired. It has been a long day. And sadly, I lost Michaela and Vance. Uh, 
don't know if I will be able to see them tomorrow. Probably not. I don't know. I have to figure it out. Um, I look at my. I look at my uh, my plan for the trail and see if I can uh, if I can hang on a little bit longer or if it's time to to get moving. It's been so wonderful to to hike 24 miles today, and I feel great right now. Uh, we'll see tomorrow morning. <laughs> but yeah. I did have a few more miles left in me, but for some reason I thought that Vale might offer a little bit more than it actually does. Um, I don't mean any disrespect to people living here, but yeah. feels like a town that hasn't fully grown into adulthood yet. Uh, who doesn't have a camping plan? Camping place, that's the Danish word. Who doesn't have a camping sign or hotel or motel or anything? Well, well. It is just about eight o'clock. I made it back to the trail. Uh, I got lazy, so I just ordered an Uber instead uh, from Safeway and up to the trailhead. Uh, so I'm back on the trail. Um, it was a pretty wasted stop for me. I think um, I probably have food enough to reach Summerhaven, I think it's called, uh, which is about 80 miles from here. Um, so that shouldn't be a problem. So I really hadn't needed to go into Vale. Um, if they had had some place to camp or sleep, uh, it would probably have been a little bit different because then I wouldn't have to stress about getting back on the trail and it's totally dark now um, and I'm camping right at the highway uh, so I am gonna listen to cars all night long probably um, not as bad as the train situation in Cabazon on the PCT <laughs> but there's cars um, and I also heard uh, coyotes or whatever it is that is out here they were howling in the distance so this is gonna be a fun night um, yeah I still smell very bad so in 80 miles I won't even begin to think about it um, but hopefully there's some place to stay in Summerhaven so I can get a shower and get some laundry done because uh, I need that right now. I don't know if you can hear the cars. Um, and also, the last section, or actually most of the section today, um, has been cacti country for sure. There are cacti all over the place, and I am camping right in the middle of a bunch of cacti. That was a nice spot um, that didn't seem to have any. Um, so hopefully there aren't any thorns or anything that will puncture my sleeping pad. I will figure that out tonight, I guess. Yeah, it's been a very nice day today. Uh, beautiful views and the sun has been shining all day. So no complaints on that part. Uh, and I will just eat some pineapple that I bought and then I will go to sleep and I don't know, i probably make it to mile 122 tomorrow. Um, this is mile 104-ish. That's supposed to be trail magic. So if I can make that for dinner, that's perfect. And if there's a place to sleep, I could get some uh, breakfast and then head on. 
that would be pretty nice but that means i also have to do way more no 25 20 it's gonna be easy no problem no problem so bye for now and i will see you tomorrow